technique to work with these fractions is to get rid of the fractions or eliminate them. And the way you do that is by clearing the denominator. And so what you would do is you would look at all the denominators of the fractions and you say, what's the common denominator or the lowest common multiple? So like if you were getting a common denominator, what would that common denominator be? Another way to say that is what's the smallest number that three goes into, two goes into, and six goes into evenly without a remainder. So you can see they all go into six evenly and that's the smallest number that they'll all divide into evenly. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this entire equation by six. So when you multiply by six, you're multiplying everything in the equation by six, each of the terms. Okay, when you multiply by six, it's like multiplying by six over one, okay, because anything divided by one is itself. So you can always write a whole number as a fraction by putting it over one. And then what you'll notice here is you can do a couple things. You can say six times two is 12 divided by three is four X, or you can cross reduce. You could say three goes in here once, three goes in here twice, two times two is four, one times one is one, four divided by one is four. Either way, you don't have a denominator anymore, which is, which is a nice thing, right? Over here, same thing, six divided by two is three, three times one is three, so we just get three. And then over here, you can see the sixes cancel, so we just end up with five. So we've cleared the denominators, now it's a lot easier to solve this equation. We're just gonna subtract three from both sides, and then we're gonna divide both sides by four, because we just wanna get x by itself, and we get one half. Okay, let's go to the next one. So number two, here what you can see is we have this whole quantity, x plus 10, being multiplied by 3 fifths. So one way to get rid of the 3 fifths is to multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, this is called the multiplicative inverse. And in, instead of like dividing by 3 fifths, dividing is really like multiplying by the reciprocal. And by doing this, you can see that the 5s are going to cancel and the 3s are going to cancel, and you're just going to be left with 1. 1 times anything is itself, so now we just, we just have x plus 10 by itself, right? But remember, whatever you do to the left side, you have to also do that to the right side. So again, you can see three goes into 18 six times. Six times five is 30 over one, which is 30. So now we've eliminated the fractions, which is a good thing. And we can uh, subtract 10 from both sides and get x by itself. So you can see x equals 20. Now another way to approach this problem, let's just write it down here again. We have three fifths x plus 10 equals 18. Another way to approach this problem is, again, any whole number can be thought of as a fraction by putting it over one. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna distribute the three-fifths, okay, into the parentheses. So three-fifths times x and three-fifths times 10. So this gives us three-fifths x. Here we get 30-fifths, which is six, right? Because 30 divided by five is six, equals 18. So I just multiplied the numerators and the denominators. That's a good way to work with fractions when you're multiplying. And then now we're just gonna get the variable by itself by subtracting six from both sides. So we get 12 and we have three-fifths x. Okay, now at this point, we're kind of in the same position we were here originally. We want to get rid of that three-fifths, we just want x. We could divide both sides by three-fifths, since that's the opposite of multiplying by three-fifths, or we could use the multiplicative inverse, which works out to be a little bit easier, I think, for most students. You just multiply by the reciprocal. That way these cancel and these cancel, and you get the x by itself. And you can see here this is 60 divided by three, which is 20, or you can do the cross reducing technique, three goes in here once, three goes in here four times, four times five is 20 over one, and so you've got x equals 20. So either way, you're gonna get the same result. So a couple examples in this video to show you how to work with fractions uh, easier and more effectively, so I hope that helps you to understand it better. Subscribe to the channel, check out some of my other videos on um, Mario's Math Tutoring YouTube channel, and uh, I look forward to seeing the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.